are reaching out to you with another edition of In Conversation right here on Daily Mira. And today I have with me a very unique elite individual representing a nation that is actually one of the fastest growing economies in the world. And Sri Lanka also aspires to collaborate and make memorable steps ahead and see through the silver linings. Today I have with me the High Commissioner for the People's Republic of Bangladesh in Sri Lanka. His Excellency Tariq Muhammad Ariful Islam. Thank you so much for joining with us. Thank you, Roshi, and uh, thank you all the viewers, particularly Daily Mirror, uh, for this conversation. Yes, and um, His Excellency is actually joining with us today um, to really kind of walk down the memory lane to see the nature of the relationship we've had as nations and also the potential in the future as well. So I would like to ask you, I mean, Sri Lanka and, and Bangladesh, we, although we do have distinctive cultures, somewhat we share similarities, value systems, and we both hold memberships in the SAC. How do you perceive this relationship historically? Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you, Hiroshi. Uh, the relationship, as you have rightly pointed out, uh, it's you know, part of the neighborhood. So we call it SAC spirit. And of course, uh, there are a lot of commonalities between the two countries. Uh, we have the, uh, the culture we share, the values, the ethos, uh, the tradition and the um, age-old civilizational linkage between the two countries. These form then people to, to people contact that I have uh, uh, just said that the, these form the core of the relationship between the two countries. So uh, I think the communalities, the people to people contact, they have they have infused all the warmth uh, in our relationship and this has been excellent for uh, for many decades now so uh, coming from the region i think uh, it's, a, it's an honor and privilege for me to represent uh, my country in a, such a friendly country like uh, sri lanka and when it comes to relationship it's all about friendliness it's all about goodwill uh, so i feel very comfortable uh, working here um, the people are so nice people are very hospitable very warm uh, the culture is so similar. I just feel like being in my own country. Uh, so that is that is my, uh, you know, initial reaction. I haven't been here for long. I've just completed my third month here. But, but uh, whenever I uh, talk to my friends, my relatives about Sri Lanka, about my stay here, they all come up with one common thing that they're very good re Sri Lankan friends, be it in the United States, be it in any other country. So as a, this is a, you know, this is a wonderful manifestation of the people-to-people uh, -people contact between the two countries, which, which I, I cherish, uh, I love, and that will, I believe that makes my work here a lot more easier. Because I, I nice see that, that I'm in a very friendly territory. It's really nice to hear that. And uh, also, uh, we know that Sri Lanka and Bangladesh are very gifted. They have so much potential and the right kind of infrastructure and vision this, this great distance that we both can go. And I think having a biodiversity ecosystem, even Bangladesh has the largest delta, you know, woven around Ganges and mm -hmm. Brahmaputra. And we see this amazing coastline that is actually marking itself up globally as well for being the longest uninterrupted natural coastline. Right. Just like that, even Sri Lanka has its own treasures. So when you see this, something that's been naturally given to us, what potential do you see, especially in arenas like tourism? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But thank you. I think tourism is a very important area of cooperation between our two countries. As you have rightly pointed out, uh, we, are, we, are, we are gifted with the nature, right? Uh, Sri Lanka is an island country, maybe gifted more because you have, it's, uh, you have coastline all over the country, all around the country. In our case also, we have one of the you know, longest natural sea beaches. So, and we also share many other uh, uh, areas of touristic attraction. We have the man world's large, largest mangrove forest. Uh, we have the delta, uh, we have hills in the north and the hills in the south, down south. And uh, 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 there are so many other places. We, we share very rich Buddhist uh, uh, heritage. So Buddhist uh, uh, trail is something uh, which is very common. And I think one of our uh, relationship is also premised on the, the, this Buddhist culture. So I think there is an enormous scope. Perhaps uh, we, we, we need to cooperate more because when it comes to tourism, I think Sri Lanka is doing uh, uh, quite well because I think you've started very early and tourism forms a very important part of your economy. Uh, 
So I, I understand that due to the pandemic, your tourism sector has been hit hard. Uh, the same goes with us. But I think we stand to gain a lot from Sri Lanka when it comes to tourism because your hospitality sector and you know the support sector, the backward linkage, you have been doing it for uh, very systematically for quite some time. And we feel that uh, we, we can learn a lot from you, particularly in the hospitality sector. So, so what we are thinking is to, is to some way to institutionalize the, uh, the relationship in the tourism sector. And uh, if we put in place some sort of you know, government framework, a G2G framework, Perhaps that will take that will help bring the private sectors of the in, in of the two countries together. The private tour operators, they can you know showcase the touristic attractions of the both of both the countries, and uh, uh, and particularly when the pandemic, uh, due to the pandemic, you know a lot of tourists from the United States or the or Europe are uh, they have started coming, but I think it will take some more time for them to come in full force. And until that happens, I think the regional tourism could be a very important area to look at uh, because of the geographical proximity. I think our tourists can come to Sri Lanka, your tourists can go to because, because you know, it's close. Uh, so regional tourism, uh, I think in the, in the, in, in the global uh, cache of uh, tourism, well, uh, I think uh, uh, regional tourism could, could be a very good uh, way of looking at uh, enhancing the relationship. Uh, so I think yeah, a lot of things to be done in tourism and uh, uh, this is one area I also want to work at. I will do the facilitation, uh, putting, uh, putting in place some kind of institutional framework and then uh, we let the private sector of the two countries to interface and figure out if they see the benefit they will take, they will do it on their own. So I think uh, that is how I'm looking at uh, the tourism sector in particular. Definitely. And also we see uh, countries like Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, we have global potential in certain industries like textile, apparel, technology and so forth. And of course, Bangladesh has a, one of the significant markets in the South Asia as well. And uh, with the economic potential, I recall that we did conduct a joint feasibility study for a potential a free trade agreement a few years ago. And we signed an MOU as well. But uh, however, it's yet to be implemented. Do you see, uh, do you envision this happening anytime soon? Mm -hmm. No, thank you. Uh, I think uh, trade, commerce, uh, this is, uh, is another big area of cooperation. Very, it holds a lot of potential. And I think uh, when the political, uh, uh, the goodwill, uh, when it translates into economic cooperation and that when it touches, when you have the economic cooperation going in full swing, you have, uh, have it touching the people's life. And that is how the relationship becomes more uh, attractive, more tangible. Uh, to common people, which is very important. So as you have rightly uh, said that uh, um, an MOU was signed on economic cooperation and under that there are a number of sectors and uh, trade is a very important sector and uh, as you have rightly said that uh, you know for any FTA or a free trade agreement uh, the, the, two, uh, do the two countries uh, which we are willing to engage into any kind of trade collaboration there has to be a feasibility study because you need to look at where the potentials lie and where, where the complementarities are. And uh, I think uh, that is the way of going for any trade collaboration. And that feasibility study has been done on both sides. And I think it's time for or to, to take us to the next level. But as we feel that uh, uh, maybe to begin with, we can start with, uh, with small basket of uh, items where uh, Bangladesh and Sri Lanka will have, you know, comparative advantage. These are where uh, we can, you know, uh, put our complementarities together. So once we identify those areas, maybe we can, we can start with a preferential trade agreement. And by that time, in parallel, we can have the, you know, the study on the FDA, and which will eventually lead, lead to a more comprehensive economic cooperation that I'm sure both the countries uh, aspire to. So that is how I'm looking at and, uh, and, um, and again, my, one of my very important areas of responsibility will be to enhance the economic cooperation, the bilateral trade between the two countries, which is not up to the potential yet. Yes. And also we see that um, as much as we are inspired to make changes, there is a slight change of perspective and action plan because there's a global recession, we are facing a pandemic and with this 
situation within this context, how do you feel that we can promote uh, investments coming into your country and our country and of course in between? Uh, what's the vision like? In, mm. What's your perspective like? Mm. Yeah, the, the pandemic, it has uh, hit hard all the sectors and of particularly course. the, you know, the trade and commerce. So uh, what happens uh, in our case is that uh, we, 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 we open the economy because um, uh, it, it has to go on. We cannot really keep it keep it uh, closed. So investment is flowing. Maybe uh, there was uh, last year was uh, there were some setbacks uh, in attracting investment, which was the case with all the countries, I suppose. But uh, it, it is picking up when it comes to investment. I think our investment is picking up, and I'm sure the same must be happening with with Sri Lanka. And uh, uh, Sri Lanka has uh, invested uh, uh, significantly in Bangladesh. Uh, they are in the in the service sector. They are, are in the in the hospital sector, uh, in the banking sector. So uh, I, the the very strong footprint uh, the Sri Lankan investors have already in Bangladesh, and and uh, we are also one of the most investment friendly. Uh, you know, we have the best investment. We call it that. We have best investment facilities um, in the region so uh, and we are you know inviting investors from all around the world um, big big economic uh, larger countries have come into bangladesh in a very big way and sri lanka has also made a, 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 a niche place in in uh, in that area so uh, and definitely as we as our economies grow as our purchasing power go up uh, because we have a big middle class, which is a big market in Bangladesh. So I'm sure uh, Sri Lanka will come in a, a larger way when it comes to investment. And uh, we will do uh, all the all kinds of facilitation from our, our side. Definitely. We did talk about uh, many different uh, socioeconomic um, themes of discussion. And now I would like to converge into your tenure here. I know it's been a brief period, but I would like to here in terms of what your stay has been like here in our island and also what we can actually look forward to in the future maybe. Mm -hmm. As I've said, uh, it has been only my fourth month here and uh, um, I want to go out and meet people. I am doing that, but because of the pandemic, I am doing it a little slow. Uh, I, I want to go by the, uh, uh, by the comfort of others. So I'm meeting. I'm meeting everyone. I'm meeting, you know, the the leaders. Uh, I'm meeting the business people, uh, the diplomats, the academia, and uh, uh, and uh, so far my experience, as I have uh, told you uh, in the beginning, that uh, people are very warm, are very hospitable. They are very friendly. They speak out. Uh, they 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 want to help. And I think since we are from the region, the the, you know, the, the regional fraternity is very much there. So as I've said, I haven't felt any problem interacting with people. People come up, people are open, people come up with ideas. They give me a lot of, they indicate, they identify a lot of areas where they feel that the two countries can cooperate. So I think um, I've, uh, I see a very encouraging trend uh, coming out of our continued engagement between the two countries and I want to uh, you carry forward that uh, that sentiment and that goodwill. And we truly hope that we can create many more memorable steps uh, with this collaboration on the long run as well. So uh, we are uh, approaching the end of the discussion. We warmly thank you uh, for being a part of our discussion mm -hmm. and uh, wishing you all the very best with your journey ahead in Sri Lanka and beyond. Mm, uh, thank you. I, I, I must thank you Hiroshi for um, that you thought about it, that you thought about uh, bringing Bangladesh into your conversation because I think this is something very important because our two countries are friendly neighbors, our two economies, they have a lot of complementarities Definitely. and, the, uh, and the, we, we, we may not be a very big economy but we can help each other in our own small way, our own uh, beautiful way. And uh, as I've said, the, the people of the two countries, they are the driving force. And as long as they are driving the relationship, I think it will uh, only grow and it will only, uh, you, you know, it go up and up. Definitely. And I see enormous potential uh, between the cooperation coming from the two countries. And, uh, and uh, I, I, I will be uh, an honest facilitator in this process.
Definitely. Thank you for bringing us to your sh me to your show. Uh, I thank the Daily Mirror for uh, thinking of us, thinking of Bangladesh, and uh, we have our 50th anniversary, the Golden Jubilee coming up. So I think this is a very opportune time that uh, you uh, you thought about engaging with Bangladesh. And that is also an open invitation for everyone to look forward to the 50th anniversary. And with that, we hope that we will celebrate not just by event, but by spreading love, peace, kindness and fraternity. Take care.